And peace to you in the name of Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. So glad to see you all here this morning on this chilly January morning. I call your attention to the announcements that are uh, in the bulletin and a few that are not in the bulletin. Uh, First off, if you missed service last week, uh, we shared in baptismal remembrance. So there are two things that you might want to take note of. There are some uh, stone or marbles on the piano. These are baptismal remembrance stones, and you're invited to take one to put it in a place where you see it every day so that you remember your baptism throughout the year. And this year, instead of writing the words on shells, we have these stones. And if you would like a prayer word, you simply need to give me a number between 1 and 40, and I will give you a word, all right? And that's a word that can help form your faith this year. And uh, as I like to say, the word picks you. Don't blame me for it. You get the right word that you need uh, for prayer throughout the year. Also, we still have some envelopes, giving envelopes out on the table, and there's been some confusion. But yes, indeed, we requested this year on the pledge cards, if you want envelopes, that you ask for them, because so few people use envelopes, we were not wasting several hundred dollars. We've recycled some envelopes we already had. So take note of that. We have the forms, and we know who checked off who wanted envelopes, because they got their envelopes. But there are still some out uh, in the new narthex on the far table. So please take note of that. And uh, also, similar with giving statements this year, if you would like to have a printed giving statement, we will mail one to you upon request. If you would like to have it emailed, we will email it to you on request. But what we found is that very few people actually use them. So we're not wasting the printing and the mailing resources. If you want one, request it. Uh, And the information's in the bulletin. Just send a note Uh, via email or call Karen in the office. Uh, Also, the artwork that has been hanging here in the sanctuary is a progressive art display that we shared throughout Advent and Christmas, and those are coming down today, Uh, but we don't want to just toss them. Uh, We cannot use them again without relicensing them, but we can share them. So if you find one of these pieces is inspiring to you and you would like to have that uh, for your own use, Karen Hutchison will be at the front of the church after worship. She will remove them uh, because they're put up in a certain way and we'd rather not destroy the walls. Uh, So she'll remove them so then we can blame her. Uh, But if you see a piece of art that you would like to take, please let Karen know and she will help you with that. Um, Also, a prayer request in the form of an announcement. Uh, We got word that former member Lee Raymer, her father, Scott Nickel, died very unexpectedly this past week, so we lift that family in our prayers. Uh, Lots going on this week. Right after worship, we have Fellowship Hour featuring Heather's Congo presentation. We finally get to hear the full report uh, from her trip with our presbytery over to the Democratic Republic of Congo. Please also note church office is closed tomorrow, but uh, Betsy made me continue the bell rehearsal, so we will have bells tomorrow. Uh, (laughs) Women's circles, both Ruth and Esther circles meet Tuesday, and on Thursday, of course, we have chancel choir at 7. Um, And before we move into worship, Heather, why don't you come forward, and if you want to stand at that mic or grab that mic, that would be fine. Tell us what you've brought us. I'm short, but I'm not that short. Um, so I wanted to show something that I brought today because I know not everyone will be able to make it to the presentation. And um, this is a, let me come up here so I can talk about it. So this is a, um, a grass weaving that was made by our sister church, Baboomwe. Um, and it, it's to us, it celebrates um, the, the trip, it says, um, Baboomwe Parish has wished over Parish Church welcome, and then it has the date, May 20, I believe it was the 28th, 2023. And then they also sent um, a communion cup uh, carved out of wood, so you can come up and see um, some, of the, some of the carving that's there. 
And then um, downstairs, even if you don't get a chance to stay for the whole presentation, there is a table downstairs with other things that um, they were very generous with gifts and things like that. So if you get a chance to even come down for a minute and take a peek before you stay for the whole presentation, um, that would be great. And if you didn't sign up, they didn't tell me I could say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. Um, please come. I, we might not have enough. We should have enough food for everyone. I'm not going to promise that. There's plenty of food. So even if you didn't sign up, please come. Yes, there's plenty of food and plenty of places to sit. And there's so, plenty of places to sit, yes. Yeah, don't miss this. Thank you, Heather. Let's prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Good morning, welcome to worship this morning. If you're able, please rise and join me in the call to worship and our opening prayer. Remember that you are reading the bolded portions of the bulletin this morning. The boy Samuel heard God's voice in the night. We come listening for God's voice. 
God knew us before we knew ourselves. We come listening for God's voice. Our minds, bodies, and souls belong to God. We come listening for God's voice. We come to this place to listen and to follow. Let us worship God. Great God, today we meet your mystery in the form of Jesus Christ. We believe you, God, and we believe Jesus to be the Messiah. But even when we do not believe, when we are distracted and unaware, we know that Christ calls us still. Help us to recognize your voice among us and give us the strength to go where we are called, that we may learn, O oh God, what it means to follow with open hearts. In the name of Christ we pray, amen. Part of worship is a confession. We believe in Jesus, fully human and fully divine. We celebrate the divinity of Christ, but we may often forget that Jesus was human too. We share humanity with Jesus, and yet we are slow to participate in the story. We witness his baptism but forget the power of baptism in our life as a community. We witness him calling disciples, but fail to hear him calling us to action. We witness him healing those in need, but forsake those who need us. And so we pray for transformation, saying together, God among us, forgive us when we assume you are far from us, and when we fail to recognize our part of your ongoing ministry. We lament that so many feel forsaken. 
We grieve for all the wounds not healed, actions not taken, and calls not answered. Teach us to participate in your mission in the world, to remember our baptism, hear the call on our lives, and help those who are sent our way. Transform us so that we may be more like Christ. Amen. Friends, God is among us. We have been baptized into Christ who is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. In Christ, we are forgiven. community of faith. So let us pass the peace of Christ to one another. The peace of Christ be with you.
Let's see. Reagan, I think you are our only child today. Come on up. Wonderful. Who's upstairs today? Mary, will you come up? You escaped it for weeks. Well, come on. Let's, let's see. Bill? Bill, are you joining us too? Wonderful. Hey, follow me. Morning. Morning. Yeah? Well, follow me. Oh, it's nice and cool in here, isn't it? Yeah, maybe I'll preach from back here. Yeah? No? Okay, follow me. I know I'm, I'm messing up the videographer, aren't I? Great. Have a seat. Why did you follow me? That's a pretty good answer. Yeah. What? Because I'm in charge? Ooh, that's scary. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to use that then. Yeah. Why did you follow me? Um, you look like you knew what you were doing. Yeah. And what did we do? Trust you too. Oh, you, okay. So you followed me because I said to, because you think I'm in charge. And you trust that. And you trust me. Huh. I like that. None of them followed me, though. What? What? Who said it? I didn't ask you to. That's right. Do you trust me? Yes. Yes? Betty, follow me. Yes. Now, Betty, why did you come? Because you told me to. <laughs> and I yeah, you. yeah. Well, today we're going to hear from Jesus. And Jesus is trying to get his team together, right? When, when you've played sports in school and you have team captains, what do they do? They, they try to, like, they, they pick which person they want on each team. Right. They pick which person. I was always the last picked. Anyone surprised by that? <laughs> Not at all. Not at all. Well, Jesus is trying to pick his team. And in the passage before today, Jesus gathered a few people, right? And we call those his disciples. His disciples. Excellent. And disciples follow Jesus because they trust him, because he's invited them to, and because they want to see what he's doing. Well, today in the passage, Jesus says two words and two words only. What are those two words? Follow me. Follow me. Didn't I say that? Yeah. And you followed. Well, it's the same thing that's going to happen today in the scripture reading. Spoiler alert. <laughs> Jesus says, follow me. And these people who he talks to today, they follow him. Because somehow... They trust him. They believe that he knows what's going on, that he's in charge, and they listen. Now, Jesus says the same thing to us, follow me. Now, I don't know about you, but I have never seen Jesus, as we think of Jesus, standing here saying, follow me, right? I might see Jesus in you, and I see Jesus in you, and I see Jesus in you, Joe, but I've never seen Jesus himself, right here. But I still follow him. What does it mean to follow him? Any ideas? You're going to trust? Look, who, who said that? Pat's wanting in on a children's sermon. I won't pick on Pat and ask her to follow me, though. We're going to do the things that Jesus did? We're going to do the things that Jesus did. And Jesus was about loving one another, right? He was about loving people and saying, hey, you got to love God and one another. Hey, you got to help people when they're in need. Hey, 
you need to give thanks to God. That's what it meant to follow Jesus. And that's what it still means to follow Jesus. And Jesus is still saying to us in many ways, hey, follow me. I wonder if we will trust Jesus enough to follow. Will we trust Jesus enough to follow? Pray with me. Pray. Loving God, thank you for sending us Jesus. And thank you for calling us still. Help us to trust in Jesus. And to follow him with all our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Very good. And you two may go on upstairs. Betty, if you really want to go up, you, you can too. But you need to stay. Yeah. Yes. Thank you so much for coming up. Thank you, Mary. I was... I was getting ahead of myself here. <laughs> Told me I had to stay. I was further down in the program. <laughs> Prayer for illumination. <laughs> Ancient word made flesh. We come to you humbly and boldly asking that you break us wide open to receive the word you have for us today. Speak to each of us and speak to all of us so that our lives may sing the story of your love. Amen. The gospel reading appointed for today in the lectionary is John 1, 43 to 51. Listen to these words. The next day, that is the day after Jesus had called some of his disciples, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. He had just called Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses and the law and also the prophets wrote. Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. And Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? And Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under a fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Though the grass may wither and the flowers may fade, the word of God endures forever. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Pray with me. Holy and living Lord, speak now your words to us in ways that we can hear you and understand you. And Lord, we dare pray, change us. And somehow, Lord, make my words your words. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Back when I was in elementary school, there was no thrill for me greater than the day we turned in our book orders, <laughs> except one greater still, book fair day. I loved book fair day. Now, my friends would go to the book fair and buy the novelty things, the pencils, the, the, the little art kit, the, the, what we would call tchotchkes, right? 
I wanted the books. I wanted the chapter books. I didn't want pictures. I want words and lots of words. And to this day, I still read books with lots of words. But back in those days, the greatest, most popular sort of book, 3D Optical Illusions. Now, some of you may have seen these. It's a mess of colored lines, complete and utter chaos, right? But somehow, if you stare at this, this picture, maybe get it really close to your nose and pull it away, they tell me, you would see that giraffe hiding behind the lines, and it would be 3D. Some of them even came with these really cool 3D glasses to make it even better. I never, ever saw the image. Anyone else? Amen. I never saw the giraffe. My friends are like, oh, yeah, that's so cool. And I'm like, where is it? <laughs> I was a pretty intelligent guy, but these 3D optical books, whoo, that was a whole other level of perceiving that I just didn't develop. And I still, to this day, cannot see whatever the image is. I cannot see beyond the chaos to see the image. I know it's there, because in the back of the book, a lot of them had cheats, and they would show you the highlighted image of what you were supposed to see. But even then, when I turned back to the puzzle page, not one clue. I know it's there, but I can't see it. So it is with God at times, right? Sometimes we see and hear God, and we realize that God has been there the whole time, just behind the chaos that consumes our attention. Sometimes we may see and hear God easily, while at other times we may not. And there are those who claim to have never seen or heard God at all. I don't know about you, but I cannot stand before the ocean at Rehoboth Beach and deny the existence of God. I cannot see that image and say, God's not here. Over the coming weeks, we're going to be exploring how we see and hear God in the person of Jesus Christ, and how seeing God in Christ has the power to change us. If you don't want to be changed, why are you here in the first place? If you don't want to be changed, you might want to skip out for a few weeks. This sermon series, Answering the Call, is an attempt for us to listen more deeply to God's voice to hear what God is calling us to, and to affirm that, yes, God is still calling us. We are still being called to follow Jesus. I want to explore just three brief points. It's, it's one of those three points and a song sermons. First, by following Jesus' call, we see more and more who Jesus is. I asked the children to follow me, the children big and small, and they did because they trusted me. Somehow, in some way, the disciples knew to trust Jesus. Was it his charisma? Was it the word that had gotten around about what Jesus was up to? Was it because they knew Joseph and Mary, his parents? We don't exactly know why, but we know that when Jesus said, follow me, they did. Simon, Peter, and Andrew, they dropped everything in a moment's notice to follow Jesus. In this passage, Jesus is calling disciples after Andrew and Simon, Peter, and he's in Galilee, and he says to Philip, follow me. Nothing more, nothing less, and somehow Philip has the courage to follow Maybe he heard, since he was from the same hometown. The gospel writer points that out. Did you hear it? He's from the same hometown as Andrew and Simon Peter. So maybe he heard about Jesus. But even if he had heard about Jesus, we have no evidence that he'd ever met Jesus. But somehow Jesus' reputation and charisma was enough, and he followed. What does this reveal about Jesus? At least here in John's gospel... Recognizing Jesus and confessing faith in him does not require full understanding. And I am so thankful for that. Because sometimes I do not understand God any better than I understand those 3D puzzles. Sometimes I don't get it. 
But somehow these disciples see who Jesus is and they follow him without needing all the details. It's countercultural for us, right? We want the details, we want the disclaimer, and we want the lawyer to look it over before we dare sign on the dotted line. Jesus calls us. And by following Jesus' call, we will see more and more of who Jesus is. Second, Jesus reveals that our prejudice is always countered by God's boundless and unequivocal welcome. The passage continues here, and Philip sees his friend Nathaniel and tells him that they found the Son of God, the Messiah. And Nathaniel says, oh, can anything good come out of Nazareth? And Philip says, come and see. It's a call to curiosity, isn't it? So Philip and Nathaniel go to Jesus, and Jesus does the most tremendous thing. He praises him. Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. I wonder if Jesus knew what Nathaniel had just said about him and his hometown. It was an insult. It was an insult to Jesus and an insult to the people of Nazareth, an insult to his family. And how quickly Nathaniel judges Jesus by the place he calls home. It's a deeply ingrained prejudice. For us, we might joke around in a way that's similar to Nathaniel. And we jokingly will say, well, can anything, come, anything good come out of New Jersey? Right? Can anything good come out of the Eagles? Can anything good come out of Newcastle County? I, I was told when I moved here that they call us Lower Slower Delaware, but as of yet, we've ne- found no intelligent life form above the canal. Is that right, Bonnie? Isn't that what you told me? Yeah. But we take it to the extreme of hurting others, too. Right? Eh, you're not bad for a Republican. You're pretty level-headed. Pretty level-headed for one of those liberal Democrats. You can't be a Christian and believe in that or vote for that person. No follower of Christ is going to support ABC. We see that right now in our nation to an extent that we've never seen before. And how quickly we rush to judgment. How swiftly we offer words that show our deeply ingrained prejudice. Martin Luther King Jr., whose birthday we celebrate tomorrow envisioned a better nation than this, I think. And I imagine his heart is breaking at what we've become, or maybe more appropriately said, what we have continued to be. Jesus operates in an altogether different and holy way. Instead of calling out Nathaniel's prejudice, instead of admonishing him for his harsh words and quick judgment, Jesus lifts up Nathaniel's best qualities. Mary Pugh in the Commentary Connections writes, Jesus called the good out of Nathaniel so powerfully that Nathaniel was able to confess, you are the Son of God. Our job in the here and now as a community of saints is to call that kind of goodness out of one another and out of ourselves, end quote. Jesus always reveals our prejudices. But in God's great economy of love, those prejudices are countered by God's boundless and unequivocal love. Third, and finally, most simply, most profoundly, Jesus calls followers. As we look at the passage and other passages where Jesus is calling his disciples, we see Jesus imploring, follow, follow, follow. And Jesus shows just enough of himself that those to whom he calls and says follow, they actually do. Richard Rohr, a writer and thinker, Franciscan priest and scholar, says in his book, The Universal Christ, that might just be the whole point of the Gospels. You have to trust the messenger before you can trust the message. And that seems to be the strategy of Jesus. Did you catch the last part, though? Rohr says he asks us several times to follow him. 
but never once to worship him. He calls us several times to follow and never wants to worship. And that's not to say Jesus isn't worthy of our praise, but the man Jesus who walked this earth, fully human, fully divine, called disciples because he wanted followers. He wanted people to go with him and to do the work that he was doing. He did not want people on the sidelines cheering him on and clapping. Jesus did not need an audience. Jesus needed followers. Jesus did not need people to say, yes, you're doing good. Yes, that's great. Yes, I'll come to church on a Sunday morning. Yes, I'm following you, Jesus. No, Jesus wanted followers who were so committed that they would indeed drop everything and make Jesus the number one priority and following him the only order of the day. Following Jesus represents a challenge for us in a world that does not necessarily believe in Jesus. And if they believe in Jesus, they may not believe that Jesus is the Son of God. They may not believe that Jesus is worth following. And I don't believe it has anything to do with Jesus. I think it has a whole lot to do with people who claim to be following Jesus but have no evidence of following. What about us? At the beginning of a new year, in the beginning of this series looking at answering the call, how are you following Jesus? It does not take much courage, friends, for most of us to come here on a Sunday morning and give glory to God and be a part of this Christian fellowship. For some people, it's a huge step, and we want to acknowledge that. But for most of us, this is pretty easy. For most of us, we've been doing this a while. The real challenge is how we're going to represent Jesus and follow Jesus when we leave this place and until we come back to this place again next Sunday. We've got a lot of people following Jesus without following the message that he brought and the commands that he gave to love God and to love one another. But we cannot claim to follow Jesus unless we're actively seeking to become like Jesus. Jesus. These are big lessons. By following Jesus, we see more of Jesus. Our prejudice is always countered by God's boundless and unequivocal welcome. And Jesus calls us to be followers. Now, unlike those 3D books that were the dreaded existence of my childhood at those book fairs, there are no gimmicks or tricks here. We're either going to follow Jesus or not. There is no in-between. It is not a puzzle. Jesus will reveal himself to those who seek him. And the primary call for us is the same as the primary call was for those first disciples. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Praise be to God. Amen. Amen. At this time, I'd like to invite Beth and Tom to come forward. Yeah, we will be sharing the affirmation of faith as part of this, so hang on to that spot. And do you have the extra copy? Great, great. I ask you all to stand over to this side, please. There are varieties of gifts, but it is the same Spirit who gives them. There are different ways of serving God, but it is the same Lord who is served. God works through each person in a unique way, but it is God's purpose that is accomplished. To each is given a gift of the Spirit to be used for the common good. Together, we are the body of Christ, and individually we are members of it. We are called into the church of Jesus Christ through our baptism, and we are marked as Christ's own by the Holy Spirit. This is our common calling, to be disciples of Jesus Christ and servants of our servant Lord. Within the community of the church, some are called to particular service as deacons, as ruling elders, and as ministers of word and sacrament. 
Ordination is Christ's gift to the church, assuring that his ministry continues among us. Through ordination, God provides for acts of care and compassion in the world, for the ordering and governance of the church, and for the preaching of the word and the celebration of the sacraments. And today, we celebrate the ordination of two from among us as deacons, Beth and Tom. At this time, I would also like to invite others forward that will be installed today. One more deacon, Heather Thompson, and we install elders, Don Blakey, Karen Fallhaber and Jimmy Gray, we install in absentia. And we install as elder Bonnie Wiley. Bonnie? Why don't we grab that microphone for you, Julia? Or you can step to it even. Yeah. And I'll have Tom and, uh, Tom and Beth will stand closest to me. There we go. Thank you. Representing the One Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church, the session of the Presbyterian Church of Dover now ordains Tom Hall and Beth Griffin to the ministry as deacons and installs them to active service in this congregation. The session also installs into active service those who have been previously ordained. Deacons Heather Thompson, ruling elders Karen Fallhaber, Bonnie Wiley, Don Blakey, and Jimmy Gray. As God calls some to particular forms of ministry, God calls us all to bear gladly the yoke of Christ, given in the covenant of baptism. Therefore, let us reaffirm our baptismal vows, renouncing all that opposes God and God's rule, and affirming the faith of the Holy Catholic Church. So, trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you turn from the ways of sin and renounce evil and its power in the world? If so, say, I do. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Lord and Savior, trusting in his grace and love? If so, say, I do. I do. Will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love? If so, say, I will with God's help. I will with God's help. And now let us affirm our faith using the words that are printed in our bulletin, words from the brief affirmation of faith. In life and in death, we belong to God. Through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, we trust in the one triune God, the Holy One of Israel, whom alone we worship and serve. In gratitude to God, empowered by the Spirit, we strive to serve Christ in our daily tasks and to live holy and joyful lives even as we watch for God's new heaven and new earth, praying, come, Lord Jesus. With believers in every time and place, we rejoice that nothing in life or in death can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Let us pray together. Gracious and eternal God, with joy and thanksgiving, we give you thanks and praise. We praise you for leading your people Israel through the waters of the sea, out of bondage, and into freedom in the land of your promise. We praise you for sending Jesus, your son, who for us was baptized in the waters of the Jordan and was anointed as the Christ by your Holy Spirit. Through the baptism of his death and resurrection, you set us free from the bondage of sin and death and give us cleansing and rebirth. We praise you for pouring out your Holy Spirit who teaches us and leads us into all truth. 
filling us with a variety of gifts that we might proclaim the gospel to all nations and serve you as a royal priesthood. We rejoice that you have claimed us in our baptism and anointed us for service in Christ's name and that by your grace we are born anew. By your Holy Spirit, renew us that we may be empowered to do your will and continue forever in the risen life of Christ to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all glory and honor now and forever. Amen. Friends, using the ancient symbol of baptism, a shell, remember your baptism and be thankful. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Amen. To Tom and Beth, who are to be ordained today, as well as to Don and Bonnie and Heather, who are being installed. In baptism, you were claimed by the love of God, clothed in the grace of Jesus Christ, and anointed with the gifts of the Holy Spirit to share Christ's mission in the world. Now you are called by God through the voice of the church for new service and ministry in Jesus' name. In accordance with the Constitution of the Presbyterian Church USA, show your commitment to this calling by responding to these questions. Do you trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, your Savior, acknowledge Him Lord of all and head of the church, and through Him believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Do you accept the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments to be, by the Holy Spirit, the unique and authoritative witness to Jesus Christ in the church universal and God's word to you? Do you sincerely receive and adopt the essential tenets of the Reformed faith as expressed in the confessions of our church as authentic and reliable expositions of what Scripture leads us to believe and do? And will you be instructed and led by those confessions as you lead the people of God? Will you fulfill your ministry in obedience to Jesus Christ under the authority of Scripture and be continually guided by our confessions? Will you be governed by our church's polity and will you abide by its discipline? Will you be a friend among your colleagues in ministry working with them, subject to the ordering of God's word and spirit? Will you in your own life seek to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, love your neighbors, and work for the reconciliation of the world? Do you promise to further the peace, unity, and purity of the church? This is my favorite. Will you pray for and seek to serve the people with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love? To Heather, Beth, and Tom, will you be faithful deacons, teaching charity, urging concern, and directing the people's help to the friendless and those in need. And in your ministry, will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? For Bonnie and Don, will you be faithful ruling elders, watching over the people, providing for their worship, nurture, and service? Will you share in government and discipline, serving in the councils of the church, and in your ministry, will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? Do we, the members of the church, accept these elders and deacons chosen by God through the voice of this congregation to lead us in the way of Jesus Christ? We do. Do we agree to pray for them, to encourage them, to respect their decisions, and to follow as they guide us, serving Jesus Christ, who alone is the head of the church? We do. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Pray with me. Gracious and eternal God, with joy we give you thanks and praise for Beth and for Tom. Throughout the ages and in every place, you have chosen servants from among your people 
to point the way to salvation by your grace. We are grateful for ancestors in the faith who followed without fear, placing their trust in you alone, for judges and monarchs who ruled in righteousness and peace, for prophets and apostles who spoke your bold words of mercy and of truth, for leaders and teachers in every age who have nurtured your people in faith and faithfulness. Above all, we praise you for Jesus Christ, who came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life to set others free. Anointed by your Holy Spirit, he proclaimed your reign on earth, revealing your saving love in all he said and did. At this time, I would invite all ruling elders and ministers of word and sacrament to come forward. And I invite my ecumenical brother, Pastor Dan, to please come as well. Tom and Beth, I'm going to ask you to come here and face me and the font. And those who are ministers, those who are elders, please join me in laying on of hands. I'm going to have you all go like this so I can get both of you. Gracious God, pour out your spirit upon your servants, Tom and Beth, whom you called by baptism as your own. Grant them the same mind that was in Jesus Christ. Gracious God, we also give you thanks for your servants, Heather, Bonnie, Karen, Jimmy, and Don as they continue in the ministry to which you have called them. Help them to rely on the gifts of your spirit and to follow Christ faithfully in this calling. Give these all a spirit of truthfulness, that they may show the compassion of Christ in the actions of daily living and rightly govern your people. Gracious God, pour out your spirit of power and truth upon the whole church, that we may be for you a holy people, baptized to serve you in the world. Sustain your church in ministry, ground us in the gospel, secure our hope in Christ, strengthen our service to the outcast, and increase our love for one another. Show us all the transforming power of your grace in our life together that we may be effective servants of the gospel, offering a compelling witness in the world to the good news of Christ Jesus our Lord. And God's people said, Amen. Amen. Beth, Tom, you are now ordained to this ministry. Bonnie, Don, Heather, as well as Jimmy and Karen, You are installed to this service once again. You are deacons and ruling elders, ordained to ministries of service and governance in the church of Jesus Christ and for this congregation. Be faithful and true in your ministry so that your whole life will bear witness to the crucified and risen Christ. All praise be to God. Alleluia. Amen. Let us welcome these new deacons as well as these uh, elders and one deacon coming back to service. Praise be to God. And thank you, Brother Dan, for coming forward. Friends, let us pray for all the earth, the church, and all those in need, saying, God of grace, hear our prayer. God of grace, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the world, for leaders of nations, that wisdom and integrity will prevail for the good of all. 
people, especially the poor. For regions torn by conflict, that peace may reign and living become an enterprise of construction rather than destruction. God of grace, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all people of faith, for the unity of the body of Christ, that divisions might not turn people away from the church. For Hindus, Muslims, Buddhists, and Jews, that wherever prayers are raised up, the one God of all will hear. For all people who nurture life in the name of a greater good, God of grace, hear our prayer. Let us pray for our own nation, for the President and Congress, the Supreme Court and all judges, for state governments, city councils, school boards, and all who have power to make policy, that all consideration be given to what is most healthy for people and creatures. God of grace, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those in need, for all who are hungry in our nation and world and even right here at home, for those who have no home and no employment, for those who are either unjustly or justly imprisoned, for parents and children who live in fear for any reason, and we pray for those especially who are mourning for the family and friends of Scott Nickel and Deborah Priatricatella Locke. For all other concerns of this body now spoken aloud or silently, we pray for Patricia, Harriet, Brendan, Terry, Ed and Kathy, Wendy, Nate, and Janice. For Kathleen, Claire, Marianne, Charlie, Betty, Charlotte, Hank and Sandy, and Eva. Are there others for whom we should pray today? Having heard the prayers spoken and those for which the Spirit bears up our prayers with sighs that are too deep for words, God of grace, hear our prayer. With thanksgiving, we remember all those who have shaped us in your ways, O God. Receive our prayers and grant whatever you see that your people need. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. The ushers will now come forward to receive our tithes and offerings. If you have not already placed your gift in the basket before worship, simply raise your hand. The usher will be by to collect it from you. Please also remember that you may give online anytime at doverpresbyterian.org.
Please join me in the prayer of thanksgiving. For abundant gifts and abundant grace, we give you abundant thanks, O Lord. Accept what we have brought, the gifts of paper and coin, and the gifts of our lives, and make of them what is needed for the ministry of this, your church. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. go from this place, the world is counting on us to live out our calling to follow Jesus so that all the world may know of God's love. As you go from this place, go claiming that calling as sure as you claim God's love for you. Go in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and go with joy for all your journeys. 
Amen.